Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. I am very, very excited about our show today. We are going to be discussing the journey of the soul, along with things like reincarnation and the friction the soul has with the natural world or the natural body for the soul is not the body. I feel like this is a very, very important conversation to have as I've noticed so many people are getting very confused by this polarity of the eternal soul mixed with the mortal body. And the mortal body is merely just an expression of that soul. So we're going to speak about that today. We're also going to talk about um, individual free will with both Angie and Nicole. But before we go any further, I just wanted to give a very, very special shout out to all of my patrons and my producers here on this channel. You guys are literally the only reason why this channel is still going forward. I thank you so, 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 so much. I do feel like there is a little bit of confusion when it comes to the YouTube world. I don't make anything off of YouTube. I'm the only money I make off of YouTube really is my patrons. That's it. They're the people that support this channel. They're the reason why content is put up for you guys. Um, with that being said, I am starting to accept some sponsorships. I know that some people have really gotten pissy about the fact that a lot of us now have sponsorships. But honestly, you guys, all a sponsorship is, is about a 45 second commercial. And it does go to help support the work on this channel. Um, I myself work about 16 hours a day doing research, editing, all that kind of stuff. And so without sponsorships, without my awesome patrons, I would not be able to put content up. Um, I would have to go back out and, and work full time again. And so I appreciate you guys for all the love and support. I thank you so much. I know most of you are very excited about the whole sponsorship thing. So I think most of you absolutely understand how much of an undertaking this is. But for those who don't understand, I just ask that maybe you have a little bit of empathy for those of us in the truther community who the only way we're able to put up our content is through sponsorships. So with that being said, a quick word from our sponsor, one of our sponsors, and then we will get on to the episode. guys i'm watching right now i just hit record and i realized um i have not smudged so if you ladies don't mind and if the audience doesn't mind i'm gonna go ahead and just smudge quickly yeah um, go ahead because because we're in a battle right now and i, I love did. it and i invited archangel michael and i invited archangel zed keel zed keel yes Let's bring them all in. Just bring all of them angels in. Um, and my prayer for Zedekiel was that he would help me to bring justice. And that's, I feel like what I've been doing just in my own little way, whenever I'm sharing like little truths here and there, like, or, huh, I noticed this or, huh, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, so, yeah. Yep, it's bringing justice to yeah. We've been lied to. Well, I'm going to call uh -huh. it Michael, Michael, Gabriel, all the angels. Bring your whole party in. 
everything, every single being that's here for our highest good, Magdalene, Yeshua, Thoth, Odin, all of the beings of the highest good, all the fairies, we're going to talk about fairies, all the elementals that are here to support the growth of humanity. I ask that you come in, all of my guides, come in right now and please block this information, or block this, protect this information, block those that wish to derail um, and do harm to the greater good. I ask that you protect all of us, protect our words, and give us what we need to say to help everybody. I uh, revoke any permission that the darkness thinks it has by using my wounds as an entry point. You do not have permission to use my wounds. You cannot be here. Um, and as my friend Jesse Zaboter told me, us of the light, I have the, the authority, as do all of you guys, to send you to the throne room of God if you break my rules. So, boundary is set, and I'm asking that all of the guides of the highest good be here to protect all of us um, in this process right now, because, uh, Lord have mercy, we are, uh, I was talking to my friend Shanti on Aquarius Rising Africa Monday before we started filming about how desperate the other side is getting and how much sorcery is going on right now, like intense sorcery is going on. And um, it just makes me giggle. I said, well, at least we look cute. Like, at least we look cute get, getting hit <laughs> by these. Just, you know, they don't look cute. So at least we look cute, you know. And when does the rattlesnake rattle? When, when it's scared. It's Mm -hmm. scared. So let them <laughs> keep trying to do what they're doing. They're terrified. We're not terrified. We're good. You know, and so and so I'm very, very with that being said, I'm very, very excited about this episode today with souls and reincarnation. Of course, I'm joined with my girls, Angie and Nicole and all of our people watching right now to uh, participate in this conversation. So please leave us any of your thoughts um, down in the comment section below, because everybody watching right now is a huge part of our of our all. We're just we're just talking about stuff. You know, we're just bouncing ideas around um before we get into it though i do i know i had somebody leave a comment yesterday a little bit confused about the soul versus the body they were asking about twin flames and if yashua and magdalene were twin flames how come they were different races so i just want to make this very clear and this is listen the whole yoga sutras which is a five thousand year old text was written up basically about this confusion. So don't feel bad if you're confused by that. This is literally what the whole thing of yoga is. So basically, when we talk about the body or any type of identity, so whether that's your dog, your cat, your tree, human, a horse, whatever, it's nature. That's nature. So in um, ancient terms, that's the Shakti, the Shiva Shakti. So the soul is not nature. The soul is the the, per, the thing that creates, that expresses nature. And so when we're looking at like twin flames, which are a split soul or two souls in one, they can absolutely be in different races, absolutely have different hair color, eye color, because the soul decides to express itself through the body. So what the Yoga Sutra says, that that is actually the whole um, crux of man's suffering is that man, mankind, human beings, we come to earth and we think who we are is our nature. When our nature is just an expression of our soul, who we really are is our eternal soul, which absolutely has nothing really to do with the identity you're in now. So yes, every anything evolving around nature, every life you live, you can have a different blood type, you can be a different race, you can be um, a different gender, you can come from so different socioeconomic backgrounds. The law of one says that when we come to earth, I love this, this that they say we were coming to refine our soul. So what does that mean? We create, we co-create with source an avatar, a life experience in order to uh, for us to refine what our soul needs to refine. And so don't get too hung up on the race, on the gender, on the, the body, because the body is beautiful. It's, it's a beautiful GPS system. We have that chakra system that's helping us get through our lessons, but that's not what's eternal. What we know we're all going to die one day, whether that's 10 years from now or 400 years from now or hell, a thousand years from now, whatever happens when the flip happens. We know we're all going to be able to change. And the Yoga Sutra talks about that. When you when you die, there is no death, really. Right. You just change death of an illusion. 
Yeah, it's mm-hmm. just an illusion. You're just changing outfits because your soul and its infinite wisdom understands that it is eternal. And that is the biggest opposing force you can have, the biggest friction you can have being an immortal body with an immortal soul. Like that is number one friction right there. And then we talk about in yoga, finding the truth through the illusion. Well, the first truth through the illusion is understanding your own illusion. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the illusion I have that I am eternally Bryce. I'm not eternally Bryce. You know, you think about, we talk, we're going to talk about reincarnation, all the past lives you've lived. Well, you're not in those lives right now. You lift them, you express them. It's just like yesterday I wore a black shirt. Today I'm wearing this shirt. Hmm. They're my shirts, but they're not who I am. It's like taking a, a Van Gogh painting. And we call it a Van Gogh painting. Well, is that painting Van Gogh? No, it's just an expression of who Van Gogh was in that moment that he created that. So I I hope that that makes sense. And again, I don't want anybody to feel bad if that's confusing, because literally that's what this book is about, because that is very confusing for human beings. And we've been stuck in a matrix system that really plays with that. It makes us, I mean, think about all, you know, the organization, I can't say it on YouTube, that starts with a B and ends with an M. They've brought mm-hmm. us really low down to clinging to these nature-based um, creations that we created ourselves anyway, you know? And so I also want to talk about, before we get into this, and you girls, we can speak about this as well. Um, I put a call out on my channel for, um, I'm going to be getting into the Mormon faith and talking about Joseph Smith. Um, now, I want to be very clear. When we talk about other human beings, dead or alive, I'm going off of actual research. I'm going off of actual documentation, actual journal entries, actual letters written. Now, Joseph Smith lived in the 1800s, so that's coming towards the end of the mud floods. So I take that documentation way more seriously than I would if it was the 1700s or 1600s, okay? Now, I'm not, as we know, you cannot divine on somebody without their permission, That's not, you know, I'm not, I'm strictly looking at the evidence. Now, with that being said, someone did mention that, you know, he couldn't be bad because he was Acturian. Y'all, we know the Acturians, the Palladians, the Lyrans, generally speaking, are good. Generally, human beings, generally speaking, are good. However, every single soul, regardless of whether it's in a human body, a Palladian body, an Octurian body, a Draco body has its own free will choices to make. So saying that a being is good just because it's Palladian or Octurian or Lyran is just as bad as saying that somebody is a bad person strictly because of the color of their skin. Yeah, I just made a, a, a post in my Telegram group about that because um, some information's come in through one of the channelers of Metatron, and uh, we're going to have not just one Lightworker Gateway portal, but it's going to be every 22nd of the month, every month until February 22nd, 24. And it gave the 13 space races that were going to share their benevolent energy. And when I went through the list of it, Zeta and Orion are on there. Yeah. And um, and then for me, I learned when I went through all this that I had been an alien abductee several times by the Zetas because they harvest DNA. And that's like as a as a species, that's generally what they do. But in every single race, there are benevolent and malevolent beings, just like not all white people are bad and not all black people are bad, and not all brown people are bad. So it's it's a, a it's a earth lesson. It's a human lesson, but it's a universal law. It's a unity consciousness. It's not rubber stamping good or bad on any one race. And exactly. being being open that each and every soul being has free will choice and they can decide to be of the light or not of the light. I mean, that's why, I mean, you think about it, guys, like as a human race, as human species, I think most of us are genuinely good. If you take the organic, just take the organic portals out. We're going to talk about that deeper later on. But just the, the people who genuinely have souls, most of us want to do good. Most of us are good. One percent of us are not so good and they do really bad things. How would you like it if you were judged by another species because of things that those families were doing on those islands wouldn't like it would you and with that being said i've said this before even if someone is born into 
one of these families, we cannot, we have no right to judge them only by their actions, only by the evidence. <laughs> and if it, if they, and if it wasn't for people born into these families that were good and became whistleblowers, we wouldn't know half the shit we know. Right. So we have to be, I, I'm going to ask you guys to be very careful with that. That's a form of bigotry. To say that one person just automatically has to be good because they're Octurian or they're Lyran or they're Palladian is very ignorant and mm -hmm. very, very dangerous. It's very dangerous. What if, I don't know if this is true or not. This is just a speculation. We know 90% of the, uh, the truthers are infiltrators. What if these people are conditioning you to believe a group of people are good so that you easily accept a takeover. Mm -hmm. So if Joseph Smith was Octarian, I don't really give a shit. It means nothing to me. Just like the fact that he was a white guy means nothing to me. Right. Yeah. Let's look at the content of the character, as Martin Luther King Jr. said, content of the character. And Joseph Smith, according to all the letters, he was not doing good things. With young children, these were 14-year-old girls, they were children, and we have it all documented. And those girls were passed around like appetizer trays at Thanksgiving. I was, um, years ago at the beach, and there were these women sitting there, you know, in lounge chairs, and I think my husband had gone to play golf and stuff, and so I'm just there by myself all day, and I get to talking with them, and I find out they're all Mormon, They and they, they travel in groups, like they go on vacation together, you know, whatever, and um. And they were, they were like, one of them was like, I wish I could wear a two piece. My husband won't let me like, you know, and tell me things like that. And I'm watching their husbands. Their husbands are like sitting there with their sunglasses on watching <laughs> all the girls walk by on the beach, looking at each other, like, you know, like, dang, did you see that, that hottie walk by, you know, whatever. And they're drinking beer and their wives aren't out loud to have a cocktail, you know, I don't know. That's all I know about Mormonism. <laughs> well, I, well, I grew up with a few Mormons. I love the people, but that doesn't, you know, and that's what I want to remind you guys. It's like, just because we come down hard on the Bible because let's, let's face it. It's a Luciferian book. Mm -hmm. Joseph Smith, big, big, uh, big, uh, Bikram Young, but was I bigger? I don't know. I BU, the BU guy, the young guy. Brigham, 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 Brigham. That's it. That's <laughs> They're all assholes. Like we have the documented evidence. I mean, if you guys look at the story of Zena, 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 I don't know if it's that one of the wives. Oh my God. I was reading through some of her stuff and I listened to someone talk about her. I got emotional. The hell that woman went through the hell she went through. And so, and yes, we know that Salt Lake city was not built by the Mormons. We know it was Tartarian. We get that. That's not what we're talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. I want to break down where we've been duped all religions there's not one religion out there that's not infiltrated and to think yours is the only one right. again is heavy cognitive dissonance and that's what we need to really focus on if you grew up mormon or if you grew up christian or catholic or jehovah's witness or whatever there's nothing wrong with you I, it's it's the it's the indoctrination it's the belief it's just like anybody that grew up in a, a, a dangerous cult destructive cult it's not the the people the people are amazing that's why we whistleblow is because we want people to realize good people to realize what they bought into i remember um, years ago when i first heard this song by rem losing my religion and i thought yeah. it was like a bad scary song <laughs> Oh no, oh, I am that is my song. Girl. That is my song. That's me in the corner right there, losing my religion. <laughs> trying and, to keep up with you. And but Mormonism, I don't know if I can do it. I know Mormonism <laughs> is uh it's it's Freemasonry. They they all their endowments, all their, you know, yeah. it's all based off of Freemasonry. We know Joseph uh Smith was a master mason. Um and so anyway, I just wanted to put that out there, guys. So we have to be very, very careful. Um, not to just take people, and I want to say it too again with the with the YouTube world. I talked about this with Jay and April from Spiritually Raw yesterday. We went from watching the news, watching Good Morning America, watching Anderson Cooper, which whether you're watching CNN or Fox doesn't matter. Doesn't and matter. 
turned that off and we went to YouTube and started doing the same thing with YouTube. So, and I love it. I love you guys watch our stuff, but I've said over and over again, I know Nicole and Angie feel the same way. Re everything we say, research it. Don't just take somebody on YouTube's word for it. Just because someone says they're a truther doesn't mean they're a truther. Human beings know how to lie and they know how to deceive. Yeah. So you, you can listen, listen to what people are saying, take notes on what they're saying, and then go and research it for yourself. Don't just be here and be like, well, so-and-so said this or so-and-so said that. I don't give a shit. Do your own research. What do you say? What do you think? That's taking your free will back. Because by just following what somebody else has says, you're, you're giving over your power. You're consenting to the cabal when you do that shit. You're protecting the tactics of the cabal. Take your power back. You're the storm. Take your power back. All right. With that being said, I'm going to get off my soapbox. Who wants to start? Nicole, do you want to start? Sure. Sure. So um, we were talking the other day about reincarnation and uh, soul contracts. And, and there is a lot of um, perceived misinformation, un misunderstanding. It's, it's, I myself didn't understand it, you know, as well as I do today, and I probably understand it better tomorrow than I do today. Like it's an it's an evolution, right? And so, um, you know, speaking of religion, you know, there's this fear of, and that's part of their control, you know, and that this is the one life you have, you know, what does you only live once imply? You have to get it right now, or else you're doomed. You know, like you have to do it right. You have to walk the line. You have to do the things. And if you don't, let me check this little checklist off. Then your your your, your soul is not good enough, right? And so, the biggest aha for me is that we are all when we're in, choose to incarnate, and we kind of have that sit down with Source and say, you know, okay, so I know you've lived twelve thousand lives. But this is what your soul really needs to learn this time. And we, our soul being, that energy being, that light body gets to say, okay, well, I'm going to choose my family that's going to provide me with all the lessons that, I, that my soul needs. And I, I'm going to choose the body that's going to provide me the lessons that I didn't have in my other lifetimes. And I'm going to choose the place, you know, so we actually get a lot of say in, in the life that we end up living and when speaking for myself only, when I went through and learned about um, the, the prior lives that I've had, um, I learned that this life was the only life that I incarnated as a female. I was male in every other life and I'm divine masculine because of that. Um, and it's because new earth leaders by and large are going to be feminine because we are done with masculine energy in the form of a man being in charge of the world basically and so source is like okay enough of that that hasn't worked you see how many years we've done this we're not doing that anymore but this is my last life to incarnate unless i want to because i've learned my lesson my soul is checked off all the boxes so to speak and so that cumulative wisdom now gets to surface and I now get to understand a lot of things that I learned in those lives. I've had negative polarity existences, you know, where you have to, you have to appreciate and live in and experience the dark to understand the love of the light. And it is very naive of any of us to think that we're only ever good and we're only ever had good existences and, oh, I couldn't possibly have had a bad life because I'm such a good person now. Well, you get to, you get to be even, balanced, unity conscious, Christ conscious, um, no ego and no judgment because you had bad lives, yeah. you know, because you had that negative polarity where you were in service to self and you thought of nothing but yourself and you acted in for no one but yourself and all of the negative karma that you get for that that lasts for 30 years or whatever it is you then have to live another life to undo and a soul doesn't appreciate that until it experiences that and so it was a huge aha for me and it took the weight off because growing up catholic you know we were never good enough you had to say 10 hell marys and go to you know confession and and like do the thing and still, it was the unobtainable 
carrot. You know, we could never get there. We can never get our hands on it because they want to keep you feeling like you're chasing something that you're just not good enough for. The truth is, is that your soul takes you into a life to provide lessons for you, not to you. And whenever you come through that, because you are a stronger being than, than you will ever be told from the outside, your strength comes from the inside. And whenever you get through that, then you are rewarded by source. Yeah. Well, and I believe that I am re reincarnated as my, my grandmother. She died whenever my daddy was um, a baby. And I'm thinking what, what you were just saying, like, you know, lessons we have to learn. Because I always want to just see her as like being this perfect, you know, person that died at the age of 24 and you know like she was killed and I, there's a whole story there that i'm i'm conjuring up <laughs> so, but um but now i see it like well you know i always heard like they're like oh we don't talk about margaret she was one of three sisters and they're like she was such a free spirit she was vain she only cared about herself those kind of things and i think okay you mm -hmm. know, like, so maybe, maybe, yeah, me coming back or her coming back as me. Um, those are some things I've got to work on, you know, I guess. I don't know. Does that make sense? Well, you get right. soul influences. And so we have um, we have a lot of different soul influences that we get. Right. So a, a soul can incarnate in a through an arrival through the portal, right, through the birth portal. Mm -hmm. Um, and so they come in as an infant into this family and, um, and so then they experience everything from birth on. Then you also have walk-ins. Yep. I was so about to say, I want to talk about the walk-ins. Yeah. You also have it to where, um, it, it can also be a part of a soul contract that that young soul only needs to experience like the first five, 10 years of life. And then that's what they contract it to do. Yeah. And then those up that walk in will basically like tap out and like, okay, the young soul now they, they fulfill their commitment. The walk in comes in, the walk in is stronger. The walk in yeah. has um, the capacity and the wisdom to carry out that soul mission. And they, it's one of two ways. I had a walk in. That makes sense. That makes, that makes a lot of sense to me too. A, a lot of walk ins occur during near death experiences or, times of crisis and that original soul is weak and a lot of times it's because they got involved with ego or the matrix or the trauma or the whatever and they really kind of beat down but that that soul has a mission and so sometimes the, the walk-in will come in and cohabitate with that weaker soul but they are the leader right and so they have the fire and they have the wisdom and they have the energy to push you forward yeah. and you do you do it together um, and then, and that was, you know, my case, but sometimes that young soul disagrees to only be there for a little time and then they tap out and the walk-in comes in and takes over and the wisdom from the walk-in helps guide you. So this is resonating with you big time. Oh, big time. Yeah. 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 It's powerful. And I'll say, Angie, like, and, and Nicole, my boyfriend thinks he was a lot. He's, he believes that he's his soul that he has now came into his body at like 12 years old. His memories, mm -hmm. his mind has memories of childhood, but the mm -hmm. consciousness only, he, he remembers a specific switch of consciousness. And what that means too for the soul that walks in is that they didn't need, that soul did not need the lessons of early right. childhood. They only right. needed to walk in at a certain point. And so if you feel that way, obviously, yeah, it's resonating hardcore with Angie. Uh, there are a lot of people. So what that means is that your soul did not need to go through again the birthing. Because actually being born, and I remember studying this in my yoga studies, the process of being born for all of us is the most physically traumatic thing we will ever go through going mm -hmm. from your mother's womb out through the birth canal or pulled out through a cesarean section into the world the nervous system everything goes through complete trauma at that moment mm -hmm. um that's why you see so many infant pictures with them giving the middle finger up <laughs> to the i love it <laughs> coming out with the middle finger up so a lot so that that's resonating that could bring a lot of peace to people like if like my boyfriend says like i remember my childhood but it felt very robotic until about the age of 12. Mm -hmm. And then at 12, all of a sudden, I remember feeling empathy, feeling compassion, 
wanting to under like all of a sudden something yeah because their their soul engages in that point and they get grounded they ground yeah. themselves and so obviously that i wanted before we go further guys so angie i want to talk because obviously this is really hitting you so i want to go but before i wanted to just because i know we have a lot of people coming out of the christian church um and i wanted to remind you guys before we go into this that the original teachings of yeshua was reincarnation that is in all the missing books of the bible which a loving god would never banish his children to hell you know we have and yashua says you have many many you just keep coming back until you figure it out so i'm going to read you guys a little bit from just a couple paragraphs from the return of the divine sophia where she talks about the fifth um, municipal council where they got rid of reincarnation and i'm actually doing some deep dives into it to do a deeper a deeper because this is very scandalous what happened so she says erasing reincarnation from christian theology began, began with the splitting of the orthodox church into two major divisions the western church was won by the roman emperor and the pope in rome while the eastern church was run by the emperor in constantinople modern day istanbul each of these emperors had the power to dictate church policy as they pleased and they came together about once every hundred years in a municipal council to review and determine church doctrine. So you see no mention of Yahshua here. It's all about policy and politics. In the sixth century, Emperor Justinian, who ruled Rome for from 527 to 565 CE, I've done, I'm doing some deep dives. This guy was a real douchebag. That's saying it nicely. Like he was a total shithead. Let's just say it that way. Decided that he wanted to remove reincarnation from third church theology. But the Roman bishops opposed this. However, Justinian, who was the most aggressive Roman emperor since Constantine in terms of meddling with theological doctrine, tried to forcibly compel this change. He imprisoned the Western Pope for four long years, but eventually Pope v v Vigilicius, I hope I'm saying that right, escaped. In re retaliation, Justinian convened the fifth municipal ca church council held in Constantinople at the huge Hagia Sophia church. So they're doing this in a Sophia church. So that's kind of a fuck you to God, isn't it? Right. Um, in May of 553 CE, the emperor's intention was to force the church to adopt new policies. And to do this, he appointed his own bishops and issues edict telling, telling them how to vote. Sounds familiar. Hello. Yeah. Our last competition here in America. They're doing the same shit. He then invited 159 of his own Eastern bishops to this conclave and only six of the Western ones pushing through 15 separate policies that were in opposition to Yahshua's that were in opposition to Yahshua's original teachings. He also declared that anybody who did not obey his edicts would be excommunicated. The first edict read, if anyone asserts the fabulous pre-existence of souls, he shall be he shall assert the monstrosity restoration which follows in it. Let him be annihilated, basically is what the word means, annihilated. All right. Here. The word means damned, while the word restoration refers to the spiritual restoration of the soul and its or original union with God through, re through reincarnation. So the soul's original union with God through reincarnation, a teaching of union that lay at the heart of Yahshua's message. Pope Vigilicius protested this council, demanding equal representation between the East and the Western bishops. Not only did Just Justinian ignore him, but he also persecuted the Pope, even trying to kill him. Today, the Catholic Encyclopedia states that this municipal council was illegal. So the Church Council of Catholic says that this, this council that happened where they took out reincarnation was actually illegal. So the Church will admit that. And thus, its conclusion should be regarded, should not be regarded as church decree. But the damage has been done. And today, many Christians do not even realize that reincarnation was ever a part of Christian theology. And thus, the teachings of Yeshua became corrupted, defiled, and hidden by men of no true mastery. The in, in, intended wisdom of Christ was silenced, and the true path of enlightenment that Yahshua taught was forced to go underground. 
In time, the rift between these two branches of the tree grew even greater. In 1054, each branch excommunicated the other. The Western Church became the Roman Catholic Church, while the Eastern Orthodox Church formulated its own approaches. Today, the Eastern Orthodox branch does not even cons consider the Pope to be its spiritual leader, which none of us should do anyway. But isn't that interesting? I, one thing I, I thought about that, too, is so many truthers are like, well... The Western Catholic Church is fucked up, but the Eastern Orthodox Church, they're great. No, they're not, honey. It's two sides of the same coin. They were the ones that enforced the taking away. So how do you, so coming from Chris, especially Angie, you coming from a Protestant background, was that news to you that, that Yahshua actually taught reincarnation? It's all over the missing books of the Bible, guys. If you read the missing, it's, he's, he's teaching it constantly in the missing, it's there in the missing books of the Bible. It's oh yeah, there. reincarnation was a bad word. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a bad word. You know, yeah. um, but of course I really, yeah, I grew up Protestant. I went to church with my grandparents, but my parents never really took me to church because one kind of good thing about my dad is that he always said there was not a church good enough. <laughs> so he good. just never, you know, now, now he's very much into the primitive Baptist church. Um, but, uh, you know, growing up, there was not a church good enough. So we never went. I, I only went whenever I was with my grandparents or with friends on Wednesday nights when, you know, stuff like that, you know, or church camp, that kind of thing. So, yeah, but reincarnation, I always thought that was a bad word, you know. And, and the funny thing is, whenever I first started um, learning about reincarnation, it was from, what's the actress's name? that She's in Steel Magnolia's. Oh, Shirley oh, McLean. Shirley yeah. McLean. I was listening to one of her books on Audible, like just driving on a on a pickle delivery trip by myself. And that's um, you know, it was I just believed it instantly. I mean, you know, it's because it it's resonated so, with me. I was yeah. like, this makes way more sense than than anything yeah. else. Doesn't it make way more sense? Yes. Like you're a yeah. loving God. Um, and that and I I was too, I I I told you guys before, like I grew up in a conservative Christian home. But my grandmother, my dad's mom, bless her heart, and freaking growing up in South Georgia at the time she did, she was very much a believer in reincarnation. And um, and she hid books for my granddad <laughs> under her bedroom table. Uh, my, my dad's cousin, my first cousin once removed, he was between my dad's age and my age, so he talked to me a lot. And he would tell, he told me the story of when my grandfather found those books. You know, it was a scandal that that she had. Yeah. But then in her later life, she was very open about that. And she, I know, I know, grandparents and parents don't have favorite children, but I do believe that my grandmother felt a kindred spirit in me as one of her six grandchildren. I had to think yeah. how many kids, um, because she was the I was the one she would talk to about these things. Even as like an eight year old kid, she was trying to teach me to meditate. She would talk to me about these things. So reincarnation was not. In the church, it was a bad word, but in my house, my my grandmother talked to me about it. So I was not unfamiliar with this concept. But then when I got to college, that's when I started to read more, like the more the Brian Weiss books, more of uh, mm -hmm. Edgar Casey books, really kind of diving into leaning into this idea, and it just makes more more sense. It just, and then of course, getting into yoga, studying the Hindu text, it's all over that as well. So that to me. Just from a per as as a person myself who has the capacity to love, that's what the soul is, right? The soul is 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 unconditional love, right? You know. So, what about you, Nicole? Like, because you grew up Catholic, you grew up, you know. What was yeah, your just and it's weird Christ? because uh, you know um, I'm seven years from my closest sister and five from my closest brother, but um, I I was always the like there are people in, in the family that didn't even know I existed because, you know, the story was, well, you came along at a time where we were just busy and we weren't visiting and whatever. I have no memory of them. They have no memory of me. It's very weird. There's like one picture of me until I start like kindergarten. And so um, it's really weird. Right. And so weird. now knowing what I know, I mean, I remember at, at, as a kid, I thought, how come there's not any more pictures of me, whatever? And I really believed for a while that's because my parents were so dang busy. But then, I, you know, now I'm like, I don't think I was a child that they really connected with. And so I really, I know now that I chose to incarnate in a very um, 
a very service to self family. And uh, even though I had siblings, they were really more siblings to each other than me. And um, I was actually being parented by my soul in, imprint. My, and I was, some of my um, alien abduction time was to uh, my soul guides helping heal me and helping to guide me. Because I really wasn't getting parented. I really wasn't getting guidance or, or taught the things I should have been taught as a little kid. And so um, I didn't, con I wasn't consciously aware of it until much, much later, but it makes so much sense now, you know, and I, I never felt um, alone. I never felt abandoned. I never felt like I wasn't deserving of love, really. I just knew that I wasn't getting it from that core family. And now I know my soul needed that experience experience to continue like the, that child soul needed that experience that was a lesson that needed to be learned that was feelings that needed to be felt and that was experiences that needed needed to be had but um yeah when at, in the catholic church you know and you hear people talk about if anyone ever mentioned reincarnation it usually came along with possession and demons right you know because People that were reincarnated, they just weren't trusted. You can't trust that. That's that's the devil. That's the demon. That's this. That's that. You know, whatever. Exorcism. <laughs> yeah, and you know, of course, it's the inverse of that. From from my perspective, the people that can't be trusted are the ones that can't think outside of the box or think for themselves. You know, and so in seventh grade, I removed myself from anything that had to do with that nonsense. But now, knowing what I know, like I said, it, it's an evolution, and uh, and and I learn more every day. Um, but I know that 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 soul influence and and guidance from higher realms is actually what saved me and then actually kind of what formed me into being who I am. My parents can't not take credit for that because I really have never fit in with them and I never will because I'm really not of them. You know, I'm really not of them. I'm with I was with them, but I'm not of them. Yeah, it's so funny you say that because I, my grandmother, the one Marianne that had that, I was just saying like out of all of her grandchildren, I, I she spent the most time with one of my cousins because my cousins had some disability, so she needed her help. But I always felt like she was kind of confiding in me like a friend. Even as a young child, she would share these things with me that were very taboo. And as you know, y'all, there were the three sisters from the South, right? Well, this shit's taboo. You know, this yeah. is not something you talk about right around the dinner table. No. Sunday, you know, and so she and I remember the conversation she would have with me. It was like our little secret, you know, and she really I give her a lot of credit because and even when I started going to India before she passed away, when she was in her retirement home, whenever I come back, you know, my grandfather would be all worried about terrorists over there. Like he had this idea that something was going to happen to me. My grandmother would pull me in the kitchen and be like, I want you to tell me everything you learned. What did you learn? <laughs> like she wanted to know. And I was like, bless her heart. Like she came from a generation where that wasn't possible for her to go off to India and do these things. But I yeah. found out through regression, the life I'm living now mirrors the life that I lived with Magdalene when she was in body. Doesn't mean it's the same life. I'm holy Bryce in this life. However, my grandmother in this life, my grandmother, Marianne, the one, the one that came up through Nolan's um, mm -hmm. in that life, she was my mother. And she yeah. gave me, and that, and that was a, a I'm not going to say who I was to Magdalene in that life, but it was a matrilineal line. And so what I went through in that life was very awful and very difficult. And my grandmother, who was my mother then, was the support system that got me through. And so we look at the soul agreement now coming back now where I'm not that person I was then. I'm, in, I'm Bryce now. And my grandmother is not my mother, but my grandmother, my, my paternal grandmother right. who has since passed away, but she comes up in a lot of readings. She's, I feel her around me as well. Things start to make sense. Yeah, right. So it's not just the lessons. It's the correcting of karma. It's the finishing of cycles. Right. And it's not so much, even though that can sound very much like a business transaction, it's not. It's because souls do this out of love for each other and out of putting the, the whole back together. You know, that takes a lot for a grandmother 
to pass away and have a soul contract that when they passed away, they were going to hold out in the spirit world just to support their granddaughter. And that my, as, as I said, she was my father's mother and statistically speaking, most time kids are, are closer to the maternal grandmother because of the, what's that saying? A daughter is a daughter for the rest of your life. A son is a son until he takes a wife. And so there's different relationships you have with your different sets of grandparents. But for her, and my dad was her only son. So that my, my cousins all come through her daughters. But I was the one that ended up having that very special bond with her. And it, and it was her. It was my grandmother who recognized that in me when I was still a child. And and that's that's the magic. That's the beauty of reincarnation and the beauty of that unconditional love that we all that our stories just inter inter are interwoven together. Yeah. 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 Whenever whenever I've encountered some of my soul family as they they've come in and uh, just conversation with them will trigger memories or um, you know, when you have a dream now, dreams are either a memory of something that had a, happened in a past life or a vision of something that's happened in a parallel dimension. It's usually one of the two. And so we, it would trigger these these visions, you know, and things and then and, and things that we had done in past lives. And I learned that I, you know, that same soul that's within me now is had a relationship with them then. And that's why immediately that's that soul recognition. Nicole just met you know, so-and-so for the first time in this dimension, but our souls have spent life after life, after life, after life together, you know, and that's saying my twin flame, it, we incarnated obviously together multiple, multiple lives. And he's always been the wife and always been the mom and I, until this life. And then he was male and I was female. And, um, and he's also got fairy. And it made so much sense whenever it happened because I was always like, you know, just so irritated with his flightiness, you know, <laughs> and, and, um, you know, <laughs> just, he wanted to like save the world. And I was at the time that we, we were together young, he, he crossed over in 1994. And, but, but at the time I, I knew that he was meant for a bigger purpose. And I just thought I was like along for the ride. You know, I didn't realize the role that I played at that time because I was younger. I still had a lot of things I had to deal with. And now knowing what I know, I'm like, okay, now all that makes sense. All that makes so much sense, you know? Um, and that's with twin flames too. Again, guys, twin flames, there's two big theories with tw twin flames. And it really doesn't matter which one's correct. Cause basically you're the same soul. One theory is that your soul decided to split into two. And one theory is that it's two complete souls of the same soul living two different carnations at the same time. Mm -hmm. And again, so if we go back to the Prakriti and the Purusha, the Shiva, the Shakti, your twin flame it doesn't matter if they're a different race from you. It doesn't matter if they have, if you have blue eyes and they have green eyes or brown eyes, it doesn't matter um, because at that moment of, of figuring out this incarnation and what your soul needed to learn, including the experience that's being lived in that other person, the yin and the yang, um, the, 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 the colors, the artwork, the experience <laughs> were picked individually for both. Um, and that is the twin flame journey because that is um, typically what happens a lot. And I know yours passed away early, Nicole, but, you know, I want to, you know, people, I think people romanticize the twin flame journey and it's not, it's, it's tough. It's hard because that is a mirror reflection of your soul. So even though your, your twin flame is not, listen, if your twin flame incarnates in your biological family, you don't need to be having a romantic relationship with <laughs> Most of the time they don't incarnate in your biological family because you will end up having a sexual relationship, which is the two putting yourself back together, literally putting yourself back together. That's why they call it making love, right? You're putting yourself back together. But usually what happens when twin flames typically will like meet later on in life, um, in this life, even though their souls are the same soul, right? You'll experience the same emotion. So if your twin is like upset about something, all of a sudden you might feel really upset and you don't know why. So you're not crazy that might you might just be feeling that from your other half of your soul or your soul um and typically you'll meet and then you'll be ripped apart from each other in a very dramatic way like very the separation period is rough and it's it's like it just rips you apart 
Um, and then you'll typically come back together with a deeper understanding of each other. But the thing about that is, is if you don't work on your shit, that twin flame is going to piss you off more than anyone in this world because it's you. Yeah. It's you. And you can probably speak more about that, Nicole, since you actually were in a relationship with your twin. Um, Cause that's, and that's why we always say, do your shadow work, do your work because everything comes down to, and there are times I will go ahead and answer this. Cause I know people are going to ask this. There are cases. So once you come into your bodies, your two separate bodies, you still, you both have free will. So, there are times where one twin will ascend and the other gets stuck in a karmic loop. Yeah. And it takes many lifetimes for him, that person to be able to release and come back. Right. Yeah. So it's not always this. It's not. Listen, soulmates are so much easier. <laughs> right. So I know when uh, we were together for two and a half years before his um, accident and it's funny now, but then it was, literal fire and ice you know um because from the moment we met we were inseparable but yet we were either fighting or making love like no lie and the people around us it's funny because uh we were a part of like 12 people that was, uh, we were all coupled up and we skydived together we we went out together we always hung out together whatever well one couple got some fish and they named the fish after us because the female fish kept beating up the male fish <laughs> because <laughs> like literally like we would tussle in the front yard we would be wrestling and we, you know he, he was telling me how to drive he wouldn't stop telling me how to drive one time i put him out the car I made him walk home, you know, like it was just always like combustible. Right. And then, but we were young, we were in our twenties. You know, we, that was a time where we were going to be triggering each other. Right. We had to learn how to go through all that. Well, his whole contract was, you know, to exit early. He left at 23 and I was 21. And so it, I had to deal with all of that, but I, I now know that I contracted to deal with all of that. I mean, I still contracted, you know, breast cancer and uterine cancer, all these things that are so um, trying and traumatic and detrimental for a woman. And it was my only female incarnation. Like that is, is like, I chose that. And I, I now feel like I did that because I had to fully embody the, the pain and the trauma that that yeah. women are constantly being put through um and so now <laughs> i have a little dog that i got about four years ago and when i when i got him I, my daughter says well what are you going to name him and i'm like i really feel like i need to name him billy and she's like are you sure and billy was my my, my husband <laughs> and and i was like yeah i just feel like i need another billy to love on like it just intuitively felt right and now I know yeah. I've verified his soul imprint is in my dog. He chose to show affection to me through my dog. Cause I'm not, I just don't couple up with people. You know, I'm just a loner. Just, I'm just happier that way. And, um, I, in my soul, I'm still in my union and, um, everything else was just lessons along the way. Right. And so, <laughs> yeah, my, part a fractal of him is in my my dog billy that that literally Love like him. looks into my soul and he just like holds my face and he's on me all the time and it sounds so weird you know and i'm like i just love you so much <laughs> i believe listen listen i know my twin's still in flesh and, bo and bone he's still on the earth plane but my dog there's just something about some some animals we bring into our homes we're like yeah you, you. <laughs> <laughs> they those souls can the, the, i mean mm. uh, there's there's lots of stuff you know trees have souls yeah crystals have souls dolphins have souls like your animal can be the vessel that a soul decides to come in and share space with you just like mm -hmm. anything else one of my main incarnations where i really was um very very positive and very um I did a lot of good for the world was as a dolphin and there's a constellation named after it. And, and that my soul being was, um, you know, living its best life, but it was as a dolphin. It wasn't on two feet. <laughs> Listen, so, at this point, after seeing the extent of what humans can do, 
let's go look under the sea because <laughs> they, they're having the last laugh. Well, I want to, I mean, so, and I'm going to say, cause I think we're going to have to do multiple parts on this because I was thinking so, that too. I'm like, this is, this is, this, this is, is oh. such a big, and so I'm okay. going to, I'm going to say for people who have questions about any of the twin flame stuff, just ask it below. It will answer the best of our abilities. Again, you guys have to do your own research too, but I wanted to go back again. We talk about again, the imprinting the stuff. Let's, I want to go back to the walk-in thing because as Nicole mentioned, Angie, that really, do you want to share a little bit about why that resonated so much with you? Are you willing to talk more about that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I immediately, as Nicole was talking, I saw, I saw a vision of me at 15 and my dad walking in, he'd been gone for like two weeks on business and he, he came in inside and I was working on a science project and I was excited to show him because I was always trying to get him to, to see that I was smart. Um, and uh, he walked in and he said, you sure are very pretty, but I can't stand to look at you. I just will never forget that. And um, I think that's when, <laughs> yeah, I think that's when I, I think of this daily. That was your crisis event. Yeah. Um, and uh, I tell the story all the time, like, because, you know, my best friend who I, I consider my soulmate, we, we, we saw each other at a, at the Catholic school <laughs> where both of our boys were in kindergarten and we looked across the room at each other like we both just got each other instantly. My crazy friend Deborah, <laughs> you know, like yeah. she's so fun. But we just looked at each other. We'd never met before, and we share so much. Of, that is so common too. Like with her dad, my dad, like trying to get them to love us. And um, so yeah, and I remember like telling her that story. But um, I tell that to my daughters. Um, the same thing is sort of happening a little bit, you know. With um, well, it happened with my oldest daughter and my husband, but now my youngest daughter. Well, she's already there. She's like, I'm not trying to win anybody's love. <laughs> like she is like, so she's like already like above where I am, like higher. I think we talked about this the other day too, like, you know, her being 16 and, and just yeah. um, the, the difference. And, but, I know, I know that was like your crisis event. It was your sole contract to do that with your father, but as a human <laughs> being, you are beautiful <laughs> and you are funny as hell and you are smart as hell. And, um, and I, I know that pain too, cause I, you know, and I, I grew up, I mean, we've talked about this offline. I mean, I don't have a relationship with my father, um, by my choice, uh, going through therapy, that was the best decision for me was to remove myself from that toxic situation. And, yeah. um, and that's the one thing, if I ever had a child, especially a daughter, I would want, I would want to be the bad guy so that she could have a good relationship with her dad. That was always my, because I didn't have that. I didn't have I have an incredible grandfather. My dad's dad was amazing, but I don't know what happened to my dad. You know, like something happened there. Um, and so, but I just, you know, that is, is, uh, but those are, that's the friction though. Right. And Nicole, do you want to explain more about like a crisis event, like what that is? So people, and, and, and I will, and I'm saying this because I feel like once you understand these things, so much liberation happens within your own mind the bondage yeah. evaporates. So we, it is freeing. It's very freeing for me. I know it looks like I'm hurting, but um, I'm just going to be crying all day after I saw that fairy. I cried, whatever. But yeah, I, I think sharing the truth, like my truth, your truth, Nicole's truth. I mean, it's going to be, it's freeing for us, but it's going to free up other people who, yeah, like I am not afraid. Yeah, I'm not trying to take away the idea of childhood abuse because we know that that is a very serious thing. But when we when we can look at it from a different perspective, it still doesn't mean it's not abuse. It still doesn't mean it's not, you know, wrong. But but looking at it from a different perspective is kind of like when they say like when you forgive someone, it liberates you, not the other person. When you can start to understand these things from a very abstract, like bigger picture perspective, you take your power back. In a lot of ways. So, Nicole, will you kind of talk the audience through what a crisis event is? 
Yeah, so it's different for everyone. And, and a common thread is a near-death experience or like a severe accident trauma like that. But it can also be something where your physical form is perfectly fine, but your soul is really hurting, like what uh, Angie described. And it's where really your soul is saying, it's either one of two things, either your soul contracted to endure that or it didn't. And someone else's free will choice has then, you know, you know, come in and really knock that soul down. And as as a all knowing source creator, um, the soul influences that we get, those walk ins, they come to us when we need them. They choose us. And they're usually part of our support team that's always kind of there, just waiting to get called in. Like they kind of all have a playbook. And for, for me, um, I've had a couple of walk-ins, but the, the, the main one that I'll speak about happened when I was in a really, really dark place and, um, and I overdosed and I, I woke up the next morning feeling great. And I was like, okay, well, that was a clear message from store. <laughs> I found out later that my original soul didn't leave, but that, that original soul needed some TLC and it needed a support system. And so, so that walk-in came in and basically took over and the walk-in comes in and they have all your memories and your personality or whatever, but they're going to influence their wisdom over your life. And it's like they take your beaten and battered and broken soul and they kind of just hold it on their lap, so to speak. And then you go, you go forward and that, that hurt soul can also choose to leave. It can also be like, okay, I've, I'm done with this life and I go and the walk-in comes in. And I've talked to several people where, like Bryce said, um, like they noticed in them a change and they were like, one day they were one kind of kid and the next day, like they had a completely different personality and a completely different outlook. And that's the thing you'll notice. Like a walk-in comes in and, and you'll see that they have this spiritual or esoteric knowledge that is way beyond what they could have possibly known, or they just have a completely different um, perspective on things. And you're like, like, dang, like, when did you get so wise? Or you're an old soul, or, you know, you hear all these things. Well, now that's how, that's how we can actually explain what happens is that Number one, we're never left out there to fend for ourselves. You can hear a lot of like SRA survivors say, you know, in the in the worst abuses that they had, their consciousness and their soul left their, that physical form um, because it may be whatever you contracted to endure, but only to a certain point. And then your soul is going to be protected. Um, we're never by ourselves. We always have a, a team of angels guides archangels like we always have we're born in with a support system and and like i said when i i wasn't getting a whole lot of parenting i didn't get a whole lot of support from my my core family but again i never really felt alone i didn't know why but now i know why because at night i was getting my heart and my uh my soul was getting the healing that i needed i was getting nurtured i was getting the guide guidance that i needed but i was uh, my head was on the pillow, my body was resting, and my consciousness was somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, I would have dreams of um, holding hands with Jesus, Joshua. You know, I would have dreams of that. I remember, I mean, and how it felt like in the night. Like, I would remember yeah. having, yeah. I had several dreams like that. Every now and again, I remember, I can remember kind of feeling like I was lifting off my bed mm -hmm. or um, coming back into my body. And so a lot of people will say, Say, oh, yeah, I have that sensation now that you mention it. Um, but, you know, we're spared that memory because, first of all, you, you have to be able to comprehend what's happening. And a lot of this is happening to children and they just really can't comprehend it. And to know that there's a, a more loving, uh, unified place that you can actually be besides the place you contracted to be for your lessons, if given a choice, that's where we would all be all the time, right? Mm -hmm. You gotta you gotta have amnesia to that to be able to still walk the path that you're supposed to walk in this life and navigate those lessons and complete your mission. 
And so that's where, um, you know, the amnesia, like even at this moment in time, source has not granted me all of my memories because I can't in this life, I can't know them yet because it's just not in my highest and best good. And I just accept that. You talking about feeling that feeling of being lifted off your bed, not even, I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, I felt like I was being rocked. Mm -hmm. Like my bed was I, I get hugs a lot and I, yeah. and I want to, so I think this is oh, actually I'm sitting here listening to y'all's stories and I think this is going to open up to even bigger conversation. And so I think maybe cause we are coming up to an hour now. Wow. Two, we can, I know, right. It doesn't feel like it. We can start with these crises and really deep. Cause I know I I've talked about, there's one big one I had when I was a teenager, which I will talk, I kind of mentioned it off and on, but I'll go into deeper detail with you guys. Um, next time we can kind of start there and go deeper into that exploration. Cause for me, when my big one happened, it was like a, a year, maybe, or maybe a few months is when Mag oh, I started to hear Magdalene. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, and I was, that'd be a good, that'd be a good spot for good start uh, to start. Because people... there's a lot to tell to tell about about the the realization of that, you know, what they bring, um, that you know, the benefits of it, and and all of that. And a lot of people won't realize it until they hear it. Yeah, and I and mine started. I've laughed. I mean, I I the day I was born, um, before I was actually born, I flatlined in my mother's womb. Mm -hmm. um, and they got my heart back up again. So that was one that started. And I don't know because I don't have any reference point to before. You know, before that was that why I could see spirits as a kid. I don't know, or maybe it's just because I was Rh negative. Who knows? But there's all these different things that happen. And you know, for me, luckily enough, with my birth story, I did not suffer any like brain damage or anything like that. I was totally I was underweight and jaundice, but beyond that was totally fine um and then certain things would happen and then when i was in high school a really big event happened a really big event that changed literally changed the trajectory of my life and it's why i'm sitting on youtube with nicole and angie right now and when when you're going through these things especially when you're young and you're a teenager when i was going through it i didn't want to be going through it i wanted to be at school with my friends i wanted to be like giggling over boys I didn't want to be in the hospital fighting for my life. You know, like that, that was not something. Um, so we can start, cause I think this is the more I'm sitting here listening and I, I really feel like God and source are like, we need to really focus on this for a while. I think we should make this a series ladies. I think I'm going to actually create oh, a God. playlist on my YouTube channel just for uh, souls and reincarnation where we can continue to really talk about this. And I just want to again reiterate that we don't have all the answers and Nicole is right. I and mean, my boyfriend sums it up perfectly. He's like, if we came to earth having all of our memories, what's the fun in that? Yeah. What's the, if we were just all levitating around, like what's the fun in that? Like it's part of the scavenger hunt. It's part of the soul because that's the whole point, you know, besides the macro, the timelines, all this kind of stuff. It's also, your soul is also knowing itself. And so yeah. it has to go through fiction, uh, friction for it to know itself. And so this is a part of a really huge conversation. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I'm going to, um, before we sign off though, guys, I want to go ahead because I forgot to do this in the beginning. I want to go ahead and remind you guys to make sure that you are subscribed to both Nicole's channel, uh, Healing Disclosure, and Angie's channel. I have so many tabs pulled up. I want to make sure I pulled up the right one. Angie's channel because, again, um, you know, I think I can safely sp speak for both Nicole and Angie. We're not trying to be Anderson Cooper. We're not trying to be anything like the old system we're trying to just open up dialogue and 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 all walk each other home and all figure this out together um and so hopefully some things in this conversation is is healing for you as much as it is for us is healing for you guys and you're connecting the dots more on things and just know you're not crazy and we didn't even get to talk about fairies. We'll have to bring that in next time. Yeah. There's so I'll much send you that on. video if you want to like add it on. Yeah, I mean, send it to me because I, I <laughs> yeah, because that was awesome. So um, so yeah, so let's uh let's let's leave part one for there. And then if you guys also have any questions about what we talked about that you want us to go into a deeper explanation for, put it in the comment section below. We can um refer you to books to read, uh, di you know, different stuff for your own growth and your own. Um, experience in this life because that is 
I mean, at the end of the day, it's what Alan Watts says, like, what's the point of life? The point of life is to be alive. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, definitely, you know, come over to my Telegram channel. We, we have people get, you know, real time downloads um, all the time. And they then they have a community of support to say, you know, this just happened to me. Like, what does it mean? Has it ever happened to you? And it actually is, uh, you know, it'll trigger someone else's download where or or that they had a dream and they didn't know what it meant. But when someone else says something, then all of a sudden they can put the pieces together. It's just a beautiful place to have little victories to make sense of the synchronicities of our life. Can I add to that? So this morning I was on Nicole's Telegram channel and you posted a, a video about um, the tree. It was a it was a, a woman from Portland, Oregon that does hypnosis. Hypnosis. And, mm -hmm. Yes. OK. And I, I, I'm terrified of being hypnotized. So I'm never going to do that. But but <laughs> I listened to the whole thing and um, I won't go into too much detail here, but I listened to the whole thing and it was and you said this is going to be especially good for the fairies here, you know, in which I learned a few days ago that I have fairy energy. And I was like, whatever that means, you know, and then what, 10 minutes after I watched it, I walk outside to go like I was going to make a video and share that, um, you know, like, these are the trees that I take care of in my yard. Like, I'm I love my trees. Like I've got some that like they have names. Like I really like protected them. I had the um, surveyor that, because we inherited this land. So I had the surveyor that came out to divide our lots, come back and redo it because there was a tree that wasn't <laughs> on my property. I was like, you got to move. You got to <laughs> move the line. I'm sorry. He's like, that's going to be like $3,000. I'm like, you got to move the line. I got to have that tree that my father-in-law planted. You know, awesome. according to the law of one, do you know, so trees are first density and then animals are second density. Do you know who becomes, what trees become in second density, according to the law of one? No. Dogs. <gasps> I'm like, my Robbie <laughs> must have been the sassiest Christmas tree I've ever seen. <laughs> I've got, I mean, y'all, anyway, I had started out that I was making a video, like I was going to, after watching that, that Nicole had posted, I was going to go walk around, you know, my paths, my beautiful place here and show everybody my trees and introduce everybody to my trees that I caretake. And some girls were walking by and I got embarrassed. And so I shut off my phone and I was like, I'll just walk over to my favorite tree. And as I walked over to my favorite tree, I saw a fairy. We and I really want to talk about this. Like, I think this is a bigger conversation. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's another thing I want you guys to put in the comment section below. If you've had experiences with fairies, we talk about ghosts, we talk about angels, we talk <laughs> about demons. Let's talk about the fairies. Tinkerbell is yeah. really nice. Tinkerbell. The elemental energy is back, and the elementals cover dragons, giants, fairies, gnomes, um, like little people, like. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of elemental energy. And a lot of people have experiences with them and they don't have any idea what it means. Right. And I think, I think that's going to be a great show. Yeah, I've yeah. covered fairies and leprechauns before, a long time ago. I will put those down in the description box, but we'll go back and we'll re-dissect all of this stuff. So, um, because... <laughs> it's a whole new world, ladies, boys, and girls. It's a whole new world, <laughs> a right dazzling now. place I never knew. And, and, and the next week, we'll talk about flying carpets. So, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I, I, you know, it's it's. I was saying yesterday on a show, like we we think, you know. Christians are all freaked out about the apocalypse that already happened. Boo, you lived through it. That was called the, the pajoning of Atlantis. We're at the end of the book. That means that it's uncharted territory. So it's amazing. They're rewriting history. Actual history is going to be what we're doing right here, right now. This yeah. is going to be what people learn for millions and millions of years going forward. And that's why Kim Tesla calls her channel the history of the future. The history yep. of the future. So, all right, you guys, we love you all. Make sure you're subscribed to both Nicole and Angie, and we'll do part two next week. We'll start with the crisis encounters and situations people have. We'll go, but if you have any questions about that, put that down in the comment section below because this is an open dialogue, open discussion. Please be very, very respectful. 99.9% .9 of people are. It's just a shame we have to remind the 0.01% of people who are. <laughs>
assholes. And if you are abusive, I'll just block you because you're probably blocked. Block, right? <laughs> You'll just get blocked because yeah. we can do that. We can block. So uh, we love you guys. Uh, make sure you're subscribed uh, to Angie and Nicole. And again, follow Nicole's Telegram channel. Um, anything that you questions you have, just let us know. We'll talk to y'all soon. Bye, everybody. If I look like I have been crying, it is because uh, of what just happened. <laughs> I was um, coming out in my yard because I wanted to um, to show y'all some of the trees that I love so much. Um, <laughs> and as I walked over to this one, um, I saw a little thing about the size of um, a nickel of uh, flitting all around in front of me and I was like what is that what is that and um, it landed on one of the branches but up too too high for me to touch it I begged it to come and land in my hand but it, it didn't um, as I got closer to it um, no it was a fairy <laughs> it was a fairy and um, I know what I saw, I have no doubt that it was a fairy. And um, <laughs> showed up just for me and um, made me cry. But it's not, these are actually happy tears because um, I, mean, I know, I know, I know what I saw. I feel, um, I feel very special that it would, um, that it would come to me and say hello anyway just uh just sharing um <laughs> just um sharing a little uh light love y'all <laughs> bye